love makes you crazy Therefore you can't call her crazy Cause when you call her crazy You're just calling her in love Blam! Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Delulu Land My name is Uhari And today we are going to be talking about a certain YouTuber called Life Plus Cindy this video is mainly for people who are already aware of Life by Cindy, her life and what's currently happening. But if you're not aware and you're just a viewer of mine, a subscriber, thank you very much for subscribing. It's very exciting. Oh! But yes, if you are not familiar with Life Plus Cindy, I can give you a brief overview. Life Plus Cindy is a YouTuber who started off as a Sims YouTuber. She had a very wholesome brand at the time. People really enjoyed her videos. It was like comforting for them. Then Cindy started to share more of herself and public perception of her started to switch. Cindy has borderline personality disorder and this plays into the general dysfunction of her channel and life. I have borderline personality disorder or BPD. I have used this as a crutch for my bad behavior for a very long time. Cindy is open about her diagnosis and she is currently as of recent admission in therapy. Cindy was married to a man by the name of Andrew. I think that they were together for over a decade before Andrew left her for another woman. Initially, when talking about this breakup, Cindy was very focused on the faults that Andrew had done. Which makes sense because at the time, Andrew had impregnated another woman and this was in very close proximity to a time where Cindy actually lost a pregnancy. So I understand that all of this just highly, highly triggered her. Cindy then went online and she, for a while, was sharing this experience with us. Until she decided to make a video telling her audience that she has essentially been lying and manipulating her audience. She has been telling mistruths or half-truths and she's pretty much been manipulating everyone in her life, including her therapist who she says that she was not honest with and that she's now taking treatment for her borderline personality disorder far more seriously. Okay, so that's who Cindy is. So today, I'm here to be talking about the concept of taking accountability. I put it in quotation marks because I think that this is something we hear so much, particularly from YouTubers or public figures. Over and over again, they'll do something, they will get caught, and then they will say, I'm taking accountability for my actions. And I think that that's usually just a statement to shut us up because, I mean, think about it. What even is taking accountability for your actions? In the context of Cindy, I want to explore that. What would accountability look like for Cindy? The catalyst to me making this video is the video that Cindy made where she basically fesses up to all the lies that she's been telling. I think that this was a pivotal point for her relationship with her audience. I hate it personally when creators come out and tell their audiences that they've been lying to them. I honestly think it would be better just to not say anything and then quietly work on yourself just from a branding standpoint because once you lose that trust with your audience, it is gone and the only chance of empathy you have is new people finding you. And those new people are likely to be like, Aww, I didn't believe this person. She's a sweet girl. And then, you know, the haters who are just like previous fans will tell them information. It'll be a whole back and forth, back and forth. And more likely than not, those new people will probably end up not empathizing with her anymore. And it's just the cycle of being a... <laughs> <laughs> a, moo. <laughs> a 
a long cow. I'm sorry, that was stupid, but I'm keeping it in. Essentially, making that video 100% certified Cindy as a lol cow. Because now people fully feel they have the justification to hate on you. The behavior that Cindy is being called out for is being an abuser, particularly an emotional abuser. How did this start? Cindy pretty much fesses up to it. She fesses up to it after uh, posts were found from Andrew's Reddit account in a group for people who know people with BPD, like a support group. And Andrew basically vented everything about what he felt he was experiencing in the marriage. The main topic that I want to address are the Reddit posts. So someone has unearthed um, Andrew's Reddit account. I'm sure he would be thrilled to know that his private posts were being shared all over the internet. He wrote some very painful things um, about me, about our marriage, and about things, uh, ways that I had abused him. I never denied being the abuser in our relationship. I said it from the very beginning. Um, I didn't go into the details of the things that I actually did because obviously it's really bad. And it's embarrassing for him and for me. And, and they are. They are really his posts. They are. I have seen these posts before, um, several months ago. That's how I found out about the affair. I mentioned it in a video, the video that I never should have made where I talked about the situation, um, where I chased them down and all that shit. I never should have made that video. I mentioned, the, I mentioned that I saw Andrew's Reddit posts and somebody went somehow and found them which blows my mind. So, all of this comes out, Cindy tries to avoid it, deletes comments of people talking about it, and eventually she realizes that it's just not gonna stop. There are too many people coming at her with this information, and she comes out and she says, essentially, yes, those posts are true, and I was emotionally abusive to Andrew, and I take accountability for that. We both we both fucked up, it's true. But I did treat him badly. I did emotionally abuse him for 10 years. I did that. She says that I never shied away from the fact that I was abusive in the relationship, and she really comes out and owns it. I'm putting accountability and owns in quotations because I believe that she hasn't owned her behavior and she has not taken accountability. That will take years of self-work to qualify as having owned your behavior and having taken accountability for your behavior. It would take years of intensive treatment and actually opening yourself up to that treatment in order for me to be like, okay, now accountability has been taken for these actions. But Cindy is caught and Cindy is very honest. And on the surface, this can seem like, oh, this person understands, this person is self-aware, this person is taking accountability for their actions. But at the end of the day, I think we're all tired of people saying I take responsibility or I take accountability or it was my fault and seemingly coming out like being honest and taking all the blame for their actions I think we're tired of it because very often it's just a template right it's just a template of apology that people use people see and then people reiterate Actually taking accountability for your actions looks very different than just getting on a camera and saying, yep, I did it, I own it, it's me. In a previous video, the one on Sarah Boone, check it out, I talk about traits within her that I found relatable and I talked about how I in high school was in an emotionally abusive relationship and not only that, I was the abuser. I was the abuser, and the intensity of the emotions I felt in that relationship, the person I became 
was so outside of the baseline personality that I had established for myself. I believed a lot of things about myself, but my actions during that relationship showed me that those things weren't true. I'm not as confident. I wasn't as confident or as secure in myself as I thought I was, because if that was the case, then I wouldn't have tried to control someone's behavior by putting them down so that they don't leave. A lot of this stuff is done subconsciously. Again, I was like 17 was my first relationship. I was out of my element. But I can acknowledge that I was very much emotionally abusive. I said a lot of things to try and break the person down because I was afraid of losing them and I wanted to keep them tied to me. I realized subconsciously, because uh, I don't think at that age I was very cognizant of my behavior the way I am now in terms of like identifying it and understanding it. But with retrospective adult eyes, I can say that I became aware that this person's sense of self has attached to my perception of them. And I have the power to bring that person down. And if I keep that person down, then they'll always need me to validate them. So I can validate them and make them feel good, but I can also bring them down. And yeah, that was how I was. I did a bunch of other, like, abusive behavior so when that relationship ended because the person eventually found the confidence they needed to walk away from this abusive relationship up until it ended i was just out of control i was in a place that i'd never been in my life and i knew at that age i knew for a fact that there was something wrong with me i was like ah uh, nope this feels pathological this feels like something that if i don't address it immediately is going to fuck up the rest of my life because despite being abusive i really loved this person i really really loved this person and the more i loved them the intensity of my love unfortunately related to the intensity of my abusive traits but just because I was abusive didn't mean I didn't love this person because I did I just was not performing love I was feeling it but love isn't just a feeling it's a verb and how we treat people determines whether or not we truly love them right or we just love ourselves above them and so we manipulate them to be people that make us feel good and try to stifle any development in them that would make them feel other which is a lot of stuff that andrew said in the screenshot including saying that she didn't want him seeking therapy i remember a point where the person i was in a relationship with got new friends and these new friends were starting to instill a certain kind of confidence in him they were there to be like this is not right. This person's treating you wrong. You shouldn't be around this person. I tried to get that person I was with away from those friends, but it was too late. Once the facade broke, or rather once the peels fell off his eyes, like Jake Paul of the donkey. If you, if you're Christian and you grew up reading the Bible, you know that story, right? There's a donkey, you can't see, orange peels, the whole thing. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the Bible's full of really funny stories. <laughs> the peels fell off his eyes. And once you, once you realize abuse, once you see it, you can't unsee it. And the feelings you have for the person don't. They're never the same because now you know. Eventually, I had to take a strong, hard look at myself and say, hey, I don't want to mess up love again. If ever I find someone I love, I don't ever want to hurt them the way I hurt this person. Cindy and I share a lot of similarities, but mainly because we both have mood disorders. I have bipolar type 2 and like I told you 
Cindy has borderline personality disorder. I was actually misdiagnosed with borderline personality disorder. So for a solid year, I thought I had BPD. So I can empathize with Cindy and say that it's hard to be given BPD as a diagnosis. Because when you read up on it and you see public stigma, not just the public stigma in the mental health treatment community against borderline personality disorder, it can just feel like an impossible diagnosis. It feels like you're doomed. It's like being told that you're a bad person and that you are a danger to people and that you are just going to hurt them because so much of the behavior manifests itself as harm towards others, if not manage. But a year later, I went to a different psychiatrist and he immediately said, oh no, you don't have borderline personality disorder. I didn't spend a lot of time with him, but he analyzed my behavior and he said, you've been misdiagnosed. And I swear to God, my life changed. And I felt so much better about myself. I had so much confidence, right? Because again, the stigma borderline personality disorder. So I get it. It's hard, right? To come out with that diagnosis and tell people because people can then throw it back in your face and be like, oh, see, you're doing that BPD stuff, right? But when a person comes out with it, with the diagnosis, and they use it as a way to explain or justify their behavior then at that point it's almost like free game for other people to be like oh but you're doing this and this and this because i think the problem with a lot of people online who open up about their mental illness is that it's done as an excuse or as a justification basically as a way to manipulate the audience into being like, but it's not me because I have this disorder. But at the same time, they have a disorder that you don't have. You don't know what it's like to have this disorder, this intense mood disorder that affects your behavior. So to a certain extent, it's like, yeah, I guess it is important to consider the fact that she does have borderline personality disorder. But then also, it's like, are you telling us this because you want to share your life with us? Or are you telling us this because you want us to think in a certain way? And I think currently that is where Cindy's audience is and the feeling of her sharing her diagnosis. Because it's like, is this weaponization or is this vulnerability and openness that's the difficulty with borderline personality disorder and coming out with a diagnosis online to explain your behavior when i identified those abusive traits about myself and i realized that i was young i was young when i like started therapy and I was still young when I started intensive therapy. I think I was 20, 21 when I started. Yeah, I was 20 because I'm 27 now and it's been seven years of intense therapy. So I took years working on myself. If you could get a degree from just attending therapy, then yeah, I would have a degree in therapy participation. <laughs> Having identified those abusive traits within myself, I understood that I had to gain a lot of skills in order to be healthy within a relationship. I had to learn communication skills. I had to learn how to communicate without manipulation. I had to learn how to handle feelings of insecurity, how to handle feelings of jealousy, how to handle being bipolar and having a mood disorder. I was talking to my therapist and I basically made this analogy. I said, having bipolar feels like having a weapon. You know, they don't just 
give you a weapon you have to go through the training and you need to learn how to safely use this weapon so as to not harm other people and when you get a diagnosis particularly often with mood disorders it is almost like you are a weapon because if left untreated and unchecked you're antisocial you just are you antisocial and you're gonna hurt people it sucks it's unfair nobody chooses to be born with a mental illness nobody chooses to develop a personality disorder these are things that once you get the awareness of you have to deal with it by yourself life isn't fair people with other disabilities say blindness or inability to walk they have to learn to adjust to the world from their center of experience they don't get to have what is considered the normal experience they have to learn how to live with the normals it's the same with being mentally ill you have to learn you have to undergo intensive training you have to dedicate yourself to your mental illness to understanding your mental illness and to managing your mental illness mentally ill people can eventually live well-adjusted lives to a certain extent but in order to do that you have to be in treatment and you have to be in treatment full time and you have to give yourself to treatment you have to openly participate in it it's not enough to go to therapy you have to utilize the skills that you are learning you have to make yourself malleable you have to be open to accepting some difficult things about yourself and you have to be open to changing your behavior not just for your own safety but for the safety of other people so what would taking accountability look like for Cindy? The way I see it, the only way to fully take accountability for being abusive is to abstain from getting into a relationship for a significant amount of time. For somebody like Cindy, who has openly expressed to being emotionally abusive and being intensely manipulative throughout a marriage of a decade somebody like that needs intense rehabilitation i know with people in aa i think it's advised that you don't date for like the first year of your sobriety i'm not sure i saw that on tv i see that on sitcoms that idea that when you're doing a certain level of work on yourself you can't be in a relationship there isn't enough you to share because the energy you have has to be diverted towards working on yourself you are essentially a weapon and until you learn how to handle yourself not only are you a danger to yourself you're a danger to other people and it doesn't matter that you didn't choose to have this mental illness. Those are the realities of your existence, okay? If somebody gets in a car and they're blind and they try to drive and they get into an accident, they can't just say, oh, but I'm blind. You got in the car. Why did you get in the car if you knew you were blind? Why are you getting into a relationship if you know that you're an emotional abuser? You need to take a lot of time to unlearn that behavior. So if Cindy, say, dates within a year of the video of admitting to manipulating her audience, just a year, I see that as not taking accountability for your action. Because they said to you, hey, this is illegal use of a firearm, go get training, and you said, okay, and you took yourself out of the game for a while. And then you said, you know what? I think I'm going to pick that gun up again. And then you went outside and then you shot someone and you're like, oh shit, I shot someone. And it's like, yeah, you're going to keep shooting people if you don't learn 
how to safely exist with your firearm, how to safely exist with your personality disorder or your mental illness. I used to have outbursts at my family members and then I would just say, I'm sorry, it was the bipolar or don't come near me when I'm like this, making it other people's responsibility to manage the symptoms of my own mental illness. If you know that you are prone to certain behavior, you need to take actions that lead you to not displaying those symptoms. It's your responsibility. If you're prone to anger, you need to learn how to manage your anger. That's yours to do. You shouldn't be telling people, oh, don't come at me when I'm like this, or, oh, you don't know, you're blaming me, but it's not my fault, I can't help it. A diagnosis isn't an excuse, it's like a come to Jesus moment. It's a, I lay my life down before this mental illness, and I promise to dedicate myself to learning how to live peacefully with other people. I'm not discriminating against people with borderline personality disorder when I say life plus Cindy should not be in a relationship until she's undergone very intensive treatment for her borderline personality disorder. I say this because Cindy herself has admitted that she was abusive in the relationship she was in after Andrew. On Saturday night, my boyfriend broke up with me and I have been in emergency therapy sessions for the past two days. Sorry for the lack of updates, but I just wasn't ready to talk about it yet. We spent this last weekend together, Thursday through Saturday. We went to Dallas, had a great time at the midnight concert. I vlogged everything. We went to SpaCon, had a great time. I vlogged everything. And then I decided to um, pull some BPD bullshit on him and he said no thank you and he walked away from the relationship of course I am very heartbroken over this I really started to care a lot for this guy and I honestly don't know if there's any hope for reconciliation he knows his value and he knows that he doesn't have to put up with things like that I have borderline personality disorder or BPD I have used this as a crutch for my bad behavior for a very long time. So after this all happened with my current boyfriend, um, I realized that some of the words he said to me, some of the things he told me, were some of the exact same words that Andrew had said to me in the past. And I went back and looked at some of those old conversations between Andrew and I from uh, when we split up because I kept them all because I'm a glutton for punishment, I guess. And I saw some of the exact same patterns, the exact same things that I did to Andrew that I started doing to this new guy too. I may have destroyed this relationship beyond repair. Uh, didn't even make it to four months. That is the fastest I have ever destroyed a relationship. But I also think it's partially because this man is very strong, um, has a lot of confidence, knows his worth. Um, he's not as weak as the other men I have dated and he's not, he wouldn't put up with it for long. You know, the minute I pulled some shit, he was like, no thanks. I don't have to deal with that. I'm out. What she says is this relationship didn't even last longer than four months because the man that she was with wasn't like the men she had been with previously because he knew his worth and he wasn't as weak minded as the others. That proves that A, Cindy preys on a certain type of personality. She went for someone who is outside of that personality and thus the relationship ended. That's really what she said. She said it ended quickly, but it ended quickly because he knows his worth. He knows he doesn't have to put up with this. He isn't weak like the men I've been with before. So she has a pattern of behavior. She is predatory by her own admission. She says that she saw a similarity between what her latest ex-boyfriend said about how she treated him with how Andrew had described the way she had treated him. And because of that, she realized that she really needs to pay attention to this. But basically, to put it in simple terms, an emotional abuser was left by their partner and then they found a new partner 
and they were able to keep up a facade for a while and after some time they couldn't do that and because Cindy hasn't dealt with how to mitigate her pattern of behavior because she hasn't taken the time to unlearn those patterns of behavior and then put in coping mechanisms healthy ones to hold up whatever it was that the unhealthy coping mechanisms were holding up so for example learning how to communicate without manipulating is something that you can learn in therapy which sounds like yeah, it's not much but it can change the structure of your relationship because you know how to get what you need without being harmful so the fact that she has openly admitted to doing some borderline personality shit or pulling some borderline personality shit that was a very what do you call it when you distance yourself that was a very almost disassociative term for what she did, right? It's like, okay, I acted in the symptoms of borderline personality disorder, but no, you've known that you have borderline personality disorder for a very long time. Borderline personality disorder may be what has contributed to you acting that way, but you didn't do some BPD shit because I believe that BPD shit or doing bipolar shit, or doing PPD shit, or whatever, ends when you gain awareness of the condition. Before the condition, you aren't aware, and you're just acting uncontrollably. But the second you get your diagnosis, it's no longer doing some BPD shit. It's doing some Cindy shit. It's, it's acting in ways that are abusive. Just because you have a predisposition to abuse doesn't mean you're not an abuser who doesn't have to work on that behavior. Essentially, what Cindy was saying was this relationship ended the minute I became abusive. Doing BPD shit is a placeholder for abusive. It's a way of distancing herself and distancing herself from accountability. I did some borderline personality disorder shit on him. And I'm taking accountability, you guys. I'm taking accountability. I'm going to tell you everything I did. I did it. Yes, I did those things. I was abusive. I take accountability and I own it. But those are just words. And they're manipulative words. And when people show you who they are, believe them. And when Cindy made the video admitting to all her lies and talking about just how much of a manipulator she is, I believe her. So when I hear her now start talking about how she's going through emergency therapy and she's gone through so many sessions, I couldn't help but feel like, is this an attempt to manipulate her audience or her ex to say, hey, look, I'm getting help. Let's get back together. I'm getting help. I'm working on myself. It could be any number of things. The moral of the story is taking accountability means completely changing your behavior. Taking steps for remedial and removing yourself from situations in which you can be harmful to others. The biggest stigma of borderline personality disorder is what it looks like untreated, unchecked, and just left to like fester. Like, like that, that, that. And you're like, oh, so there you go, you're Catherine Knight. Uh, she's the one who chopped up her man and cooked him and then served, tried to serve him to his children. Those are the kind of people who come to mind when the term borderline personality disorder is said because the cultural introduction to borderline personality disorder is usually when they talk about the worst case scenarios. But a lot of those people didn't have the opportunity to get diagnosis in time and didn't have the inclination to dedicate themselves to treatment and become different. There's a lot of stigma surrounding borderline personality disorder in the same way that there's a lot of stigma surrounding bipolar. And sometimes because I've been working so hard to manage my symptoms, I can even like forget that I have bipolar because what I have 
turned it into is a hyper awareness of my feelings. I know my feelings, I know my reactions, and I know warning signs for antisocial behavior. I know when to extract myself from social situations. I know how to avoid the worst case scenarios of my mental illness. And that didn't come overnight. Again, seven years and I'm still in therapy intensive and I still take my medication and I will never stop therapy and I will never stop medication because I will never not have bipolar anymore. It's a lifelong mental illness, mental disability to a certain extent because it can interfere so much with your ability to live a productive, well-adjusted life in society because managing the symptoms can take so much time. But you have a chance at a well-adjusted, healthy life. But the price is treatment. And like I said, it's a come to Jesus moment. It's a, I surrender. I give my life to this. I give my life to treatment. I acknowledge you, mental illness. And I will respect you. And I will give you attention so that we can coexist without us fucking each other up because at the end of the day once you get the diagnosis accountability shifts and it changes because now you know and now you have to take those decisions so yes that is what i believe taking accountability should look like which is just taking yourself out of life and saying, I need to focus on this hardcore because that's just it. You have to learn how to function in society when you have a mood disorder or any sort of disorder that puts you at risk for very antisocial behaviors. That is how we change the stigma around mental illness, particularly mood disorders. We change the stigma by working on ourselves and learning how to heal and dedicating ourselves to that treatment. Okay, guys, that is, that is all I have to say about the situation. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've made it this far, Thank you. Thank you so much. It really means a lot to me. I'm not even being facetious. It means a lot that more and more people are starting to subscribe. Every single subscribe is like, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Even if you don't want to subscribe, please like it or dislike it or just comment. How do you feel about Life Plus Cindy's admissions? Do you feel manipulated or do you feel like she's actually trying to change? Or something else, just tell me your feelings. Let me be your therapist. No, bad, bad girl. <laughs> it's gonna take me at least like the next decade. <laughs> Because I, I actually am going back to school and I want to study psychology because I think it'd be so cool to have somebody in the field who's one of us, you know, have our own, treating our own. I'm very excited about that. So one day I will be able to be your therapist. But until then, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you the next time. Bye.